Salem to uh, stand with our indigenous brothers and sisters against Nestle and brought with me uh, and this is uh, everybody's first protest uh, Zach my oldest son his girlfriend Alexa Joseph and Hayasa um, we just made it up here so we'll be bringing you some more footage as the day goes on much love and see Everybody, we're here uh, at uh, the Capitol building in Salem. This is uh, John Carroll, who uh, hooked up with the face, uh, the Google event, and came on over. Uh, and he's got a few words to say about what's going on here. Well, number one, I am upset at the low turnout because what you people do not understand is, after they're done with the natives, it applies to everybody else. They are controlling our water, they're controlling our food, they will tell you what to think, and then you will be nothing left but sheep in a pen, and then guess what? You're done. Just, I'll make it- Oh, you're really absolutely short. right. People don't understand. When the government doesn't keep their agreements with one form of people, they're not going to keep them with no, anybody. They're not good. And the government has a long track record of screwing over the natives. They've screwed over every minority in this country. And now we have an anti-minority, anti-immigrant wave going through the country. And people aren't understanding. It's not just them. It becomes us. And it's all of us. And Anonymous does stand with the tribes against Nestle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Power to the people, baby. Power to the people. Well, we, the people need to stand up and the take people it. Need they to stand have the up power, they're not using it. Exactly, the That's, people are not understanding. They don't understand. Um, and they, uh, it's almost like we've lost our minds. We've lost our common sense, that's for damn sure. Yeah, we have. You know. Well, but thanks glad, for the word, I'm John. To, I'm glad to see you out here, brother. Oh, I'm happy to make it out here. You'll see my kids running around.
people throughout uh, Columbia River Gorge on both sides of the river as well as the Warm Springs, the Yakmas. I will ask the Creator to bless each and every one of you as he will bless us and may good words come out from this meeting and understanding for you to understand who we are and what we are and how important it is for what we stand to protect and stand up for today. I ask the Creator to bless each and every one who is coming to be here from far and near as well as those that are here to hear us today. May the Creator bless your hearts and your minds, your spirits, and your way of life today. I thank you for being here to listen to us. Thank you. This is all. I will open up by saying that my people who are here is for the reason that is very important for all our people. Even your people should understand that. Water is a water is a is a source of life for all people all beings and all life the animals the fish and the plants the timber and whatever grows around it and those springs that we're going to be talking about today it's where my people lived in uh, in uh, village and homes along that river and in that area way before the white man came down that river. And those springs were the source of that they used the water for their everyday life. And they respected it. It's a part of the way we look at our religion and the way we use our religion. It's not the way you people worship your God and worship your lords. Our way was here from the beginning of time because it was put here when we were put here by the Creator. And our springs were put here for our people, for our use, the villages that were there. You look at that water in a way of use in different ways than the way we look at it. 
when we're in worship or when we have ceremonies water is the first thing on our tables and the last thing before we get off the table every Sunday we use that water in any important ceremony that we have water is there for the beginning of the meals the end And those things there are very sacred. There were many springs as that one is there. And our village, the villages that were there, the people that were there, protected and used that water. It was for their use until the white man came and moved them out of there. Moved them up to War Springs and some over to it toward Yakima. There's a very great un misunderstanding by the people when they come, come to this part of the country and look at us people of the river. We are river people. I'm a river person, and that, and my grandfather, and the grandfathers before him, were the families of chiefs, and that was part of what what they what they ruled to protect the springs, the drinking water, and the use that we needed it for. It wasn't for pleasure. It wasn't for anything else. Not like we do, not like you use it today. My people have had great respect and we still have great respect for the Columbia River. We never, never tried to soil it or do anything with it. <laughs> because it is part of our life. Today, that water is like sick from the dams. The fish is suffering in it. And the people even know that they can't use it because it's so polluted. The only good water you have, no what that we have, are from them springs and from them tributaries that go into that Columbia. They are still clean yet. For how long, we don't know. Until somebody else like Nestle wants to come in and make a profit off of it and use it for his pleasure. Because he doesn't understand my people. He doesn't understand our religion and our way of life, which was always here from the time beginning. And the respect that we have for what is there, the resource, that water, which is very important, more important to Indian people than anybody else looks the way they look at it. We use that water from the beginning of our lifetime to the end of our lifetime. It's always there for a, a purpose. Like I said, on Sundays, we use that for all three meals. Any, any important dinner, that water is on our table. That's how important water is to us. That's how important them springs are to us. Nobody made them springs. The Creator put that in so that we could have that water, clean water. Seem like the new people have destroyed everything or polluted everything or done, done wrong to everything else around this. Columbia River, 
now they're starting on the water. Now they're starting on our precious springs. We never play on the mountains like the white man does. We never venture up on bother. We never go and play in the lakes where our food is. We have great respect for it. These songs like you heard right here explains this. This song is very important. It wasn't made up. Nobody brought it to us and nobody taught us that. We've always had it. This is our way of life. And I will not ever now, I'll never consent or give up a way to let that spring be used for anything else. But they accept the way they all exist in. What the Creator had given us. There's been not enough damage done to the Columbia River and all our fishing areas. Let's not destroy what we have left. This, these mountains, these mountains provide that water for us. So we have that respect for this water, for these mountains and that timber, as well as we do that water. It's hard to make people understand our way of life and the way we look at this earth, that we are a part of, we are a part of that earth, that land where that where those springs come out from. When we go back, we go back to the earth as part of that. So the so those are our animals. The deer, the elk, the squirrels, all those that use that water. They have that life to depend on that water. It's important to them, just as important to them as it is, as us, the fish. You look at what's happening to your fish nowadays when I hear reports of it. That's because it's what's, what's been done to the Columbia River. The only thing, the only place that the fish can find a best place to survive and uh, replenish is by the water coming from them springs, like that area there where our people once lived and used. All them tributaries in that area was a village site of my people on both sides of the river. And they were removed. We never, we never depended on the mighty dollar or anything. We always had food. Our food was in the mountains. Our food is around that area where that, where those springs are. Our medicine was right there. We didn't have to go to no clinic or doctor to get our medicine, it was there, provided for us. That's how important that spring is to us. And any other spring along there, where I live, over in Underwood, there used to be a spring up on that hillside. It's no more, because people developed above it and drained it out. There has to be an understanding between your people and my people to know what is important in life for each other. You people depend on clean water. We've always had clean water. But if you allow somebody to come in and destroy it and use it for something else, then we lose it. And what good is it going to do? It's only going to make him a profit. He doesn't care whether you survive from it or anybody else. 
or a string. And it's not his to take. Why don't he look in Europe and find the springs over there? Because this is where the Creator put us and this is what he provided for us. Without that water, we wouldn't have the deer, the elk, and the other animals that we survived from. That's how important it is to us. Sometimes, in our way, water is a medicine. You can't live without it. Even your people can't live without it. If you wanted to go and sell that water and give it to somebody else, you wouldn't have a right to it anymore. You wouldn't survive. Think about it. Our wilderness and our springs and our water is not for sale. It's not for I hope that hope that you people can understand and look at how important our our life is with the water. You have your Catholic churches, you have your Protestants and all the other religions. We have our own religion. And in our religion that water is very important. We use it when we when we have our ceremonies. We thank the Creator for it. You guys go to, uh, go up to Salilo in the spring because you hear there's a salmon feast. That's the part of our religion that we're giving thanks to the Creator for that new fish coming back. We can't go do anything else with it until we have that feast. Tell our food, to our people, go and feast the first fish. But when, before they eat that fish, they gotta drink that water. When they finish eating that fish, they gotta drink that water. That's what this religion is, and that's what a, this part of this life is for us. We don't accept anything else over that. And I hope that you people can understand. I don't want to give that water up. I don't want to give them springs up. Man didn't make them springs for us. The Creator gave it to us. And we're a part of that way of life. So I, for now, I'll thank you. This much I'll say. My brother will be here later on. He's on in some other business. But here's the click of that chief. And when he comes, then he'll he'll do his speaking. There are others uh, others here here that can speak as well. But it will be about this spring. And the other springs along that gorge that we want to protect. We don't want anybody from Europe or anywhere else coming in and taking it for their benefit and their profit. Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm reluctant to drink out of the bottled water because I don't know where it came from. You ever look at uh, Evian water? 
You look at it backwards, it says naive. <laughs> yeah. And let's not be that way with this thing. It's, again, but then they don't like to talk about the, those treaties are supreme law of the land, guaranteed by Article 6 in the U.S. Constitution. So that's how the, we were able to keep fish in that river. Look back and see what Isaac Stevens said. My children, because he was asked that question, will your children do as you have promised? He said, yes, my children will honor my words. Let's not make a liar out of him because that's his promise. There will always be fish in that river. And in order to have fish, we need water. Not us, but the salmon. But we need the water too. So these things, state government can override a treaty right. They've been trying for many years you need to go back and take a look at history of why the declining salmon runs were. All of these dams are built on village fishing sites. I'm only talking about my area now, Bonneville, John, the Dallas, John Day, and those ones. That's all I know about. But our, our villages were there when Lewis and Clark trespassed into our area with no papers. And I think back about Trump when he's talking about all of the aliens. And I said, maybe he should go back and look for his ancestors' entry papers when they landed on the coast over there. Did they get a stamp? Oh, he's, he's a guy, I tell you. <laughs> he's the only guy that can go bankrupt and get rich. So, you know, these things you need to hear and understand. Because when they built those dams, guess where they were going to put the fish? Below Bonneville Dam for the recreation and commercial fishing industry. The Indians will pay them off. But we didn't want that. Because that is my life. My role to protect them. And when my time on this world is done, I want to be able to tell my creator, I did my best to protect the gifts that you have given us. Water, salmon, deer, berries, medicinal plants, trees, rocks, they all have a role in our life. And I want to tell him I did my best to fulfill the law that you gave to us, to take care of them, and they will in turn take care of you. So. Let's make sure we're upholding his law, God's law, the supreme law of this world. That's his instructions he gave to all of our people in that area. Thank you. Nestle equals broken treaties. Nestle equals broken treaties. Nestle equals broken treaties. Nestle equals broken treaties, Governor Brown. We shudder at what they come for now. Our next speaker, and I just want to say here that 
Man, nothing but respect. We have one more speaker here. Um, unless there's another one I forgot about. And then when the speaking's done, please don't leave. We need to do some marching around here. People might be hungry. We need to sing some songs. Oh, um, yeah. Most important, well, maybe not most, but we want to get a photo of everybody up here on the steps so we can get a nice photo of everybody. So, um, yeah, so that you can see it's not just this, us, it's not just the Indians. You know, this is kind of historical. I forget which speaker talked about it. But usually it is just us, it's just the Indians. We usually are up against city, county, state, <laughs> everyone, all of the agencies and the townspeople as well. We're on one side, they're on the other side. So it ain't like that now here today. Well, this is historical. We're all on the same side of this one. It's Talking during during the uh, hunger strike, I was talking to a couple of sports fishermen, and I told them, "You guys should be concerned about this too. You just like to to fish in the rivers." They told him, "I know we haven't always agreed. We kind of butt heads, you know, Indians and sports fishermen." I told them, "I know we bumped heads in the past, but we need to stand together on this issue." Because there ain't going to be no fish for nobody if Nestle is able, if this goes through, if the Nestle proposal goes through. I told him that. He was listening good. And I told him, when it's all done and we save Oxbow Spring, we can put our gloves on and get back to duking it out. <laughs> he thought that was pretty funny too. <laughs> He said, all right, are there any sporties here? We're just putting the word out. Somebody put a word out to them. They need to um, uh, be a part of this as well. They drink water, and they like to fish too. So, and we have someone here who can speak some more about that as well. Um, <clears throat> oh. Um, getting corrected, it's recreational fishing. Yeah, that's what they are calling themselves now. Recreation. <laughs> okay, um, our next speaker is a co-founder of Move to Amend. It's a national organization. And um, I'd like you to give a hand to Rich Harrison. Well, I think we all agree on what we should say now. Nestle, go home. Can we get that? Nestle, go home. Nestle is a very large multinational corporation coming out of Switzerland, a beautiful country. Lots of water. But Switzerland will not let Nestle monopolize their water. So they had to come here, and many other places in the world, by the way. This isn't just the only action that's going on with Nestle. We have to stand here and draw a line in the sand and say, not here, Nestle. Not here. And hopefully, eventually, not anywhere else. Now, you know, this is a local action. It affects you, it affects me. They won't stop with Oxbow Springs. Are you kidding? Uh, you know, if we say if we tell them we can pump fifty thousand gallons of water a year, they'll want five million, and they'll keep working until they get it. And if that means getting other springs, taking it out of the of the Columbia River, whatever they have to do, they will do it in order to make money. As long as they can sell that, now. Here's one of the key elements. How do you fight a company like Nestle? Well, Nestle produces a lot of food products, and we don't have to eat them. 
We don't have to drink it. If you will go later on to our table over here on the right hand side, you'll see, you can get the literature that tells you, and you can go to the event as well, uh, that will tell you all of the different products in Nestle produces. There are literally hundreds. And what would happen overnight practically if all of us could convince 10 other people and those 10 other people could convince 10 other people, etc., not to purchase Nestle products. Now we can, we can do this because we can zero in on one company. Let's zero in on Nestle. Yeah. And when the other corporations, the other mega corporations see what is happening with that, they will begin to pay attention to us. We can do it, but we have to do it together. That's where our strength is. You have power. You just can't understand how much power you have until you get together and, and focus on one goal. Now, Move to Amend has the goal of controlling corporations in general, uh, especially corporations that are involved in our political system. And they aren't too many. But they are mega corporations with big bucks. And they have bought our legislature, our national legislature. They have bought also our state legislature. Not, not as bad here. We have more leverage here than we have at the national level. But it's still going on here. I am so pleased to see these young ladies active, active in, in, a, in a particular uh, goal to you know, get a, uh, a political agenda done because I don't know if you can see it, but I happen to be a little bit advanced in years. And you know, when I go to a meeting of, of progressives like myself, uh, it's like bingo night at the retirement home. So we have to have a younger generation coming up to fill in where we have left off and keep going forward and get corporations out of our politics. Now you might wonder how that can be done. We do have methods to do that. There are at least, oh, at least five you can count them off on, on one hand, but I'm gonna mention a couple here. The most important of these that we are working on now, well, is to educate the public as to what corporate personhood means. Corporate personhood is where corporations have gotten themselves considered as people so that they can sneak into the uh, Constitution and step up to the Bill of Rights and say, hey, we have all those rights too. We have the right of free speech. Well, gee, you know, this, this all comes through the Supreme Court, by the way. Uh, so we have the right of free speech. Um, how can we really exercise that right? Well, the court has said, you know, corporations don't have mouths, so they can't really talk. So what we'll do, they do have money. So what we'll do is let them use that money to speak for themselves. And so now they are able to, especially since Citizens United, able to take that money and throw it into an election and run all the 30 second sound bites that they that we can possibly stand and maybe they can convince the public to vote for their candidates or vote against the people who actually still oppose them we do have some of those legislators there's one right here in the state capitol i know there are more than one but one who has done a great job for a long time that's brian clem and he was able to uh, work with us in 2013 and get HJM-6 passed. HJM-6 was a plea to Congress to uh, pass an amendment that says that corporations are not people, that money does not equal speech. We got that there. We got some action there. There was, there was an attempt to get it through. It was called the Udall Amendment. But there was an attempt to get it through and it failed, of course, because we don't have quite that much power yet. But nine or six years ago, 
nobody even knew what corporation per, what, what personhood was. So uh, we have made a great stride. We've gone through the, the legislature. We've gone through numerous cities that have passed resolutions that have said they agree that corporations are not people and that money does not equal speech. We have to get that done. Now, there is one other tool that we have. Our founding fathers said, what if Congress just, you know, doesn't do anything? What if Congress no longer responds to the will of the people? Well, they wrote that into Article 5. It's called the Article 5 Convention. Instead of going through Congress, we can get a constitutional amendment by uh, having the state apply to Congress again for a convention. And a convention with a specific purpose, or, or several specific purposes, to write amendments. Now, once those amendments are right, written and passed or, or, or uh, uh, ratified by three quarters of the state, we will be in a position to shut corporations out of politics. That's what we need to do. We need to keep working for that, and that's what I've dedicated the rest of my life to. And I hope you will as well. Thank you.